he was forcibly sterilized in the summer of 1937 before he had even turned 14. Willi was one of several hundred children who had a German mother and a father who was a soldier from the French colonies. A whole world collapsed in November 1918. Prussia's might and glory were no more. It was all over for Kaiser, God and Fatherland. After four years of slaughter, 10 million soldiers lay dead on the battlefields. And as many people died on the home front as well, both in Europe and beyond. The moment of the victors had come. On June 28, 1919, the Allies received a small delegation of diplomats from Germany. The representatives of the German government signed an accord under protest because it was largely imposed without any input from them. In particular, the French government, led by Georges Clemenceau, remained staunchly unbending. Never again was Germany to pose a threat to France. The treaty put all German territory west of the Rhine under Allied occupation for 15 years. Allied forces moved into the area stretching along the river from the city of Kehl to Cologne in January 1920. Of the 100,000 troops in the French Army of Occupation, more than a fifth came from the French colonies, Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, Senegal, Madagascar or Vietnam. German troops had encountered them on the battlefields near Ypres and in the trenches of Verdun. Horror stories about the African soldiers' savagery made the rounds on the home front. As a result, the Germans were awaiting their French occupiers with no little trepidation. During these days, many Germans saw people of color for the first time in their lives. Until just before World War I, there was no question of deploying black soldiers in Europe. Then an officer named Charles Mangin wrote a successful and controversial book in 1910 called La Force Noire, The Black Force, where he said the Senegalese riflemen are good soldiers. They've proven themselves in Africa. Why shouldn't we deploy them in a war in France? It was clear that France was afraid of Germany. In 1914, Germany was a stable, rich, powerful country with a population of 65 million, and there were only 39 million French to stand against them. It was a foregone conclusion that the relationship was completely lopsided and that France was doomed to defeat militarily, so they needed to find soldiers. And Charles Mangin proposed that they rely on an immense reservoir of African troops. During the war, they were already publishing propaganda warning that the French colonial troops would cut off the ears of German soldiers and wear them on strings around their necks, that they were barbaric and acted like animals, and were being ordered to do so by their French superiors. Stories like this and all these fears were already being whipped up anyway. Now their focus was simply redirected onto these colonial troops in the Rhineland. And then, of course, there was also deep-seated racism that wasn't just confined to the Germans. The idea that troops from North Africa, Senegal and Vietnam were now in a position of power over the German civilian population. Well, that was a reversal of the established colonial hierarchy, wasn't it? That these colonial subjects could now exercise authority over Europeans who had once been colonial masters themselves was perceived as extreme humiliation. Und das wird wahrgenommen als extrem.